Well, the writers at Funny or Die readily admit to leaning left, but they say their goal is to create comedy that transcends party lines. The highest compliment, they say, is when people from all political points of view laugh. Funny is funny is their mantra. Take a look. So, I called this news conference, and you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna flip over this, you're gonna love this. There's some of the hottest political jokesters around, the folks at Funny or Die, with 50 million online followers. I have to know, what is it like to be the last black president? Seriously? What's it like for this to be the last time you ever talk to a president? Humor with a purpose is what they call it. I'm gonna press this. I don't touch that, please. That Between Two Ferns video led a million people to sign up for Obamacare. It's also a bill that won't go anywhere. We had a rare glimpse inside their new comedy war room in Los Angeles. Just make a health care song. <laughs> a rapid response team to try and keep up with politics these days. The day we visited? The biggest story politically right now is Bernie and introduced Medicare for All bill. What's the funny in it? They say, watch Sanders' finger. He makes a lot of good points. It's clear as day. He's <laughs> typing out socialism. Copy. Morse code. He's doing Morse code for socialism. Look at the finger. They take their political funny very seriously around here. Because politically, it's still difficult. And one of their secret weapons is this guy. It's such an amazing resource to be able to go to David and say, I don't get why these things, how these things came together, why they happened. David is David Litt a former speechwriter for President Obama, who never intended to end up in politics, but as a senior at Yale, a plane trip changed his life. It was that little airplane television in the seat in front of me, and I saw Barack Obama give a speech. I remember the exact moment. People who love this country can change it. And by the time that plane landed, I was ready to do whatever it took to help be part of that campaign. You were 24 years old when you went to work at the White House. Yeah. Um, which at the time I thought was very old. I was like, I've been out of college for two full years. You are a bit of a child prodigy, if I may say so. Oh, you may say so. <laughs> okay. Could have gone to college at 12, 13. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't, but yeah. Now 31, he's written a candid and self-deprecating book about his White House years. You say the president didn't know your name until the second term. He thought my name was Lips rather than Lit, briefly. I think he thought it was a nickname. I'm not really sure. But the thing is, when the president of the United States gets your name wrong, you can't correct him. I mean, he's got more important things to do. So I was like, all right, Lips it is. For four years, Litt was in charge of one of the president's most high-profile annual speeches, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I want to especially thank all the members who took a break from their exhausting schedule of not passing any laws to be here tonight. The process involved some dozen writers and 600 jokes. 600 jokes for one speech. It's 600 jokes for one speech. And maybe that speech would end up with about 30 jokes in it. And it, so it was a very selective process. According to Litt, presidential humor can play an important role. There's two things to me that jokes can do for a president. One is, it's just a reminder that this person is human. I'm just a person, I make mistakes, and so self-deprecating humor can do that. And the other thing that comedy can do is tell the truth in a way that you're not always allowed to in politics. And these days, he says, nothing could be more important than that. I think young people yes. recognize that our politics right now is not working the way it's supposed to. and comedy is a way of acknowledging that without totally giving up on the system. So having the sense of the absurd, but also a sense of possibility and a sense of hope at the end. Well, full disclosure, I've known David Litt all of his life. His mother was my best friend in law school. And when David was about, when David was about two years old, he and I were left alone in a room uh -huh. together with a fish tank. And I'm going, oh, look at the pretty fish she yeah. had in blue. And David proceeded to list the Latin names for all of them. <laughs> I said to his mom, have you talked to him lately? Yeah. Anyway, smart guy, very funny too, so. Fun story. Yeah. Cynthia, Fun. thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.